Can you imagine what this podcast would be like if we did it at 8.30 in the morning? <laughs> Short? Oh, it'd just be f- so fucking evil. That, well, that's you. That's you in the morning. No, that's me in the morning, yeah. too. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what well, even, even today, that's what I said earlier. We came over because I, I woke up too early this morning. And then Shaylee said, you need a podcast. And I was like, all right. So I ended up taking a nap today. So I woke up. You know, an hour before I had to come here, so I had afternoon hate today. <laughs> morning hate in the afternoon. Yeah. So it's not really the morning; it's just after waking up. Maybe. Yeah, we could do it. The sleep other study. thing <laughs> uh, uh, the, the, to offset that: the fact that we do this podcast when we're in our best mood, and it's still pretty fucking negative. <laughs> <laughs> We just try to find that sweet spot of drinking and a fucking Adderall to make us chatty. And it's still fucking awful. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah I'd probably lose gigs if we did uh, morning. I, there's, you do, too honest. But you do morning radio. Oh, but there, there's a filter on that. Sorry, I realized yeah, we after did, I said We did it, do wrong. morning radio. I don't know how much of this shit we talked about in Denver... I was outside for a lot of it. Did we at least apologize to fucking Detroit for that standing show that shouldn't have happened? But oh, at the Token, yeah, the Token Lounge, yeah. which uh, I, Token Lounge, they're they're great, too, but we can't do fucking standing anymore. There was a legless girl <laughs> in a wheelchair in the front row, and I I couldn't even fuck with. They her. made her stand. <laughs> she was legsless. She was missing both legs yeah. above the knee, and uh, I told you she was there. I, and then I lost her. I couldn't find her because well, everyone was moved in the forward. Front, but people were, like could kept standing in front of her. Yeah. Like so, I just I would cheat to her. But it was so like six hundred people in there standing, and you can see the first two rows of you know heads. Like if it get out of control, I couldn't. So I'm not gonna start fucking with a legless girl if I can't see the you know 540 people that are in the you know, in back of her. Uh, it was it was that was a a, a yeah. forced set. Like just stay on point, say the fucking words, and get out of here. We shouldn't. We should. We should go back to the Emerald Ballroom. Uh, we were talking about that. That's what's the name of that that town? Mount Clemens. Mount Clemens. Yeah. Which I uh, stopped doing because those audiences would get out of control. That's Detroit. It's like Philly. That you was a balcony. Kind of, but and, yeah, yeah. The Emerald Ballroom had the three balconies, but like, <laughs> not like a theater. It had a bar right in the middle yeah, yeah. on the first tier. And, they had yeah. the whole morning zoo. Local radio guys had yeah. the balcony and the animals were just falling off of there yelling at you and that's the where the that youtube clip that i put up on your channel the um, yeah. don't, don't boo, boo a girl, girl. Yeah. where they were booing shawcroft because she said she was canadian like, <laughs> she just got just said i'm canadian or a cascade i that was one I of the i shouldn't have wore a skirt stan hope i shouldn't have wore a skirt really you think that's what it was <laughs> that was one of those uh we, we've been pulling it off now but this is a different era for us uh where i tried to uh host and headline which we've done on the road where i just go out up front you know hey andy andrus can't fucking host so I'm, yeah. here here's 10 minutes of my bullshit and announcements and welcome to the show and here's andy and but back then you know it's just started off wrong and- you were in a tuxedo were you yeah yeah i think walsh was there too wasn't he <clears throat> i think so yeah walsh is gonna be on the next leg of the tour brendan walsh now he's got, he need that baby money. He, <laughs> he made a baby. I wish I could remember how his, because I keep saying I'm going to steal all your anti-baby material you used to do, <laughs> and I'm going to open with it, but I don't really remember how it goes. Something about, you know, I don't want to come see your baby. Yeah, yeah. Your baby stole my best friend. <laughs> how do you accidentally make a baby if you're not, like, under 20? <laughs> I, Thank accidentally. You. Oh, oh is it on wanted. purpose? I don't know. Oh, I didn't. I, I, how do you purposely make a baby? <laughs> he actually told Hennigan not to tell me. He was afraid I'd like really hate him or something. I don't know. We'll find out. Ooh. <laughs> Cliffhanger. <That'll be> <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, I'll listen to the road podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Walsh has ever been on our podcast. I don't think he has. 
What about in Vegas? No, uh, no, he was oh. he was on one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Vegas, I don't remember. Yeah. That it's even a city. That was two huh. trips ago, I think. I don't specifically remember him being on a podcast. I just remember hanging out with him in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he that's when we had a lot of people at Glen Wool and Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. A bunch of people were there. Kenny don't and look Tommy at me. are here. No, anything. Kenny and Tommy are here. They just got back from their Vegas trip of but I, I'd have to count on fucking Tom Kanopka to make it interesting because I heard Kenny's version and it was like listening to my mother tell me about how she went to the dollar store. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> for the trip, that is. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, yeah, getting Tom's got his shit back. Uh, I, I mean, there were, I, I, Tom did videos or something? I don't He's know. posted a well, few it, things. We were. Let's get Tom. We I've heard driving. Kenny's version, so let's get Tom on here. If you're if you're in the mood, if you're so inclined. No, well, you Kenny said told me. Was that it? Yeah. Well, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny can, I can share the mic with Kenny though. Kenny has yeah, to no, chime no, no. in. Kenny, go. I got right. Yeah, Kenny tells uh, gambling stories, and then well, then I had four dollars, and then I, I I shouldn't have I bet that four dollars, but then I came back to the machine, and someone was playing, and they hit like two hundred and seventy-five dollars. So if I hadn't have gone to the bathroom. It's one of those <laughs> fucking boring gambling stories. <laughs> Gambler stories. You, Tom, you yeah. lived in Vegas. You know yeah. the person who's... It was always Ron Putnam would be the Ron guy Putnam. that had no money and would sit next to me when I'm playing video poker and just do color commentary. And it was just like the biggest jinx. I, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if you if you had held that four, you'd have had a full house. Like I know that. Just shut the fuck up. The worst. Oh, don't talk to me when I'm fucking gambling. That Vegas seven o two. I think I blocked her on uh, Twitter. <laughs> she came to all those shows every time I played Vegas, and afterwards she'd just sit there like a fucking tumor and just talk to you while you're gambling about nothing. <laughs> to the point where I just I hated. I called her a fucking jinx, and she, she'd make jokes about it. I'm like, I'm not kidding. You're a fucking jinx. I don't believe that her being there actually affected how the video poker machine worked, but I know it made the uh, whole thing unpleasant. The whole experience was yeah. unpleasant because of you. Yeah. You're a fun jinx. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not a fun person to be around kind of jinx, but a jinx that's kind of bummer, a, jinx. a bummer to fun. Yeah, a bum jinx, yeah. exactly. The one thing that I just remembered, and first, welcome back, and thank you very much again. Kenny and I did have a good time. You said one thing. You said, wait and see. When you take Kenny up to Vegas, he's going to see it for the first time, and I'm going to enjoy watching him. Yeah. And that is, in fact, what happened. When we, went, uh, when we were getting right up close to the Hoover Dam, and the first time he sees just a little hint of the Colorado River, he fucking went ballistic it was great you know like he had you know like he was in the desert for 40 yeah. years you know water and uh <laughs> and uh no but i mean i felt the excitement too i hadn't seen it in a long time i just took a side road highway yeah for an extra two hours so yeah i'm glad i seen water i mean what can i say no you don't it's absolutely that was a, a very honest thing in that moment it was exciting and then when we got into <laughs> the plaza this was the best after getting to the plaza and we're up in the room, whatnot, Kenny's like, you know, I, I, I got to go. I, I know exactly where I got to get, get some weed. Now, I didn't know that he was going to a medical, dis you know, the, yeah. the, the dispensary. Yeah, when you're I in thought, where you used to buy drugs anyway when they were illegal. Yeah. Because the plaza is right next to the Las Vegas that, Greyhound That's station. what I was saying. Well, you was, thought he was just going over to North Las Vegas <laughs> to that, meet a guy? You, jump, you jumped Las ahead Vegas. of me. Right. No, you jumped ahead of me. That's exactly what it was. Because he goes, no, he just walked out, the, out of the plaza and made a left turn. Now, when you go left out <laughs> like of the I plaza, was going. you're going to the fucking homeless shelters. Yes. And, that's worse than Naked City. That's fucking death. Yeah. And I'm like, hey. well, okay. And, and only that, blocks from death. No, I mean, you, you're there. You can smell it. And, right. and but so, so then ultimately when he came back, he, I, I, I don't know. I think it came back down and he's like, oh, you're right. I shouldn't have gone that way. It's up this way. And then we went to the dispensary and this is watching him. I assume that you had a, a card. I myself uh, no. have never even been into one of the dispensaries. This was like him going to fucking Mecca. <laughs> oh my God. God, he looked, he's got the edibles and the BB, or whatever the fuck, well, acronyms. It was funny. It was funny as fuck. Well, and here's, yeah. here, here's what I got from Kenny. <laughs> he was bitching about you 
And this is a normal thing you would do. First of all, you have to remember, Tom dealt in uh, casinos for years, Mm -hmm. for eons. So Tom would place Kenny's uh, a small bet out oh, for yeah. the dealer. You, it's a common thing. You can either tip the dealer or put a bet out for the dealer, where if you win, they win too. So it's kind of unjinxing. Well, cr- well, well, not really. So Kenny, when the dealer wins, Kenny's thinking, that should have been my money. <laughs> he didn't well, care about the tip. But it was when the dealer won, he's thinking, oh, fuck, that could have been my money. In my defense, I wasn't talking shit. I had a question with the (laughs) taking money out of my tray to tip the dealer, which I found out after you told me. But Well, you you, you probably wouldn't know to tip a dealer. I did tip the dealer. He was doing a good thing. I tipped the dealer multiple times. Well, he got, got, you know, the dealer. So I was helping. Actually, we'll go right to the dice table. So Kenny. Wait, what was that that you were playing before with with the... I wasn't playing anything. Kenny was did poker. I was, he did. Poker? I didn't watch any of that. I played. I played. He a was tournament. on his own with all that. Played well, while slot he was, machines. I did. I only yeah. wasted a hundred bucks on slot machines. I wasted a hundred bucks in the in the in the dispensary, pretty much. Wasted. Uh, wasted. Wasted. Well, wasted. Wasted. Didn't waste. Wasted. Yeah. Didn't waste. I came home. <laughs> yeah, you still was, got some of that stuff. As a matter yeah, of fact, one hit a week. But uh, last me a week. No, I played I'm in a poker buzzed. tournament. It's a hundred twenty-five dollar buy-in. It was only six <laughs> of us. And no, I did not get first, but I did say I did make it to the final table. Um, right on. That's five people. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, four of the five were locals, and they're cross firing, <laughs> and they saw him coming a mile away. <laughs> After he was explaining it to me, I'm like, and you want to talk on a about slot jinx. machine? No, next to there's an old no lady. jinx. I, you you asked. You said, can they do that? Well, of course they fucking <laughs> do that. You walked I, right into it, brother. I know. I know less about gambling than Kenny. And as soon as you said that, I was kind of like, oh, was Kenny the mark in that table? I wasn't there. <laughs> this is based on what he said. But he did play dice actually very well and the table was passing they were rolling numbers and i had him betting the pass line and betting odds and he was winning and he made i think three or four long shots i would never tell him to do this not to do it the whole time well no don't do it it's crazy good for you to stick by your guns kenny well then he hit a couple (laughs) but now let's now let's deal with the reality of 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 the of the percentages that it ultimately ate him the fuck up he was up, and as he's going up, he was going south with greens. And I'm like, yeah, we was on a long... Now, I didn't want to say, okay, because he's betting his money, your money. I didn't at any point say, okay, you've doubled it, you tripled it, let's get the fuck out. You could he have kept... No, I mean, you would have listened. And uh, <laughs> so he kept betting those one-roll bets, and eventually that shit... Now he, he's going it north... It grind with, you down. Now it, he's going north with greens. No, no, no. no. Never yeah, came yeah, well, out of yeah, the exactly. pocket. back up. But, no, I mean, eventually, no. anywhere you are, they're going to get you if you stay in long yeah. enough. So I don't know what he pigeonholed or didn't, but... As, as a non-gambler, though, the, the whole purpose is just to have fun, right? Because... Yeah. I keep all my money in my fucking pocket and I win all the time, but I don't have any fucking fun. So the whole purpose is to have fun with it, right? Yep. And it, I did. I had a blast, as a matter of fact. Good. I, you got that out of him, Chad. <laughs> he did. <laughs> there it is. That's the takeaway, and that is the truth. I did. You, you the, come, that is what, what the, the fuck it was. Is, it mean, was. Because you know you're going to lose yeah, all the time. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much. And, and it, when I was winning, I was dumb enough to keep sitting there or dumb enough to put my money back in the yeah. machine. So yeah, Or smart or, enough if it wasn't your money. I also <laughs> told him <laughs> I also told him in the beginning, especially if somebody's, I mean, he's played poker or whatever. I said, the worst, it's the old, the old fucking truism. You know, the, you gamble. The worst thing that can happen is if you win the first time because now you're chasing that for the rest of your fucking life it's like you know whatever i don't twice heroin, i've I been leaving vegas and once at the airport hit a royal flush oh, that's the only wow. reason i had money because yeah. my plane is leaving i'm like you yeah, gotta hurry up go. and pay me my fucking plane's gonna leave and once bingo and i hit on a dollar machine we've won four grand as we were leaving we we're at the uh, you know by the the Hoover Dam on this side, right? One of the, the, last, what's that, the same not the last one, but close to it. You're uh, thinking of the railroad pass, where we hit four grand, and we Jesus. already had our bags at the valet. Went back in for breakfast. They go, let's just put a hundred bucks each. Get the fuck. Hit four grand and went back to the fucking valet and said. Hmm. Uh, we're going to stay another day. <laughs> so, yeah. I, my my first experience with gambling, I was probably, I think I was 17 years old still, and I was in the army, and my mom was, they made the Indian casino outside of Globe. Ah. And uh, 
that my mom was fucking addicted to it and going to, so when I came home on leave, she's like, you got to come with me out to the casino. <laughs> we went out there and I lost $40 in a dollar machine in, I don't know, 30 seconds. I don't remember how long it was, yeah. however long it takes you to lose $40. And I wanted to just cry and I wanted to go home and my mind kept cycling all the things I could have spent $40 oh, on. So exactly. Like, I'm just like, I could have done this and I could have done this. So I was pissed and I, I hated to do that it. with hookers. Greatest thing that could happen to you. A there couple of days later, she said, well, you know, I'm going back out to the casino again. And I went to the casino with her again. And I'm like, all right, I'll do it, but I'm only going to do 20 bucks. Five bucks in on a dollar machine, I won like $240. Ooh. First three minutes this time. I was barely started. I, I was only 17, <laughs> 18 years old, maybe. I was like 18 by this point. I went over and told them, go cash this out. I can't cash this out. Go cash this out. I'm ready to go. We just got here. Well, I don't give a fuck. I'll be outside. <laughs> she went and cashed my $240 out. And I went and waited in the parking lot for her to finish losing all of her money. So I I don't know. I don't Did understand. you walk with 240 ultimately? Absolutely. Good I for you, Mr. I didn't Mr. put Shank. another fucking dollar in because I knew man. how much I hated myself for <laughs> losing $40. Yeah. Now, I eventually lost because my mom was a fucking uh, psychopath and she got my... A pin number on my bank card and went back to the casino and pulled out all my fucking money and gambled it all. So I lost yeah, in the end. That'll, but that'll do it. That's. Did you ever gamble before you started dealing? No. I don't know if dealing no. was the thing that made you. No. Go, was, oh, this is. Why would you ever gamble? No. I. I was no. I really was. I mean, we played penny any poker when I was like thirteen. That's how cards got into my hands as a young guy. You know. But it was just, you know, just aunts and uncles with shit money having fun, which is ultimately what it is. And my father taught me how to uh, make the moves. Yeah. My father loses all of the fucking hands in straight poker, but he's coming back with the biggest pile of pennies at the end of the night. So now I'm finding <laughs> out he's doing the scoop. He's doing all this shit. So that's where my life of uh, craziness began. But, uh, but ultimately, beyond the, the, the tables, watching him, the moment we hit Fremont Street, now you can tell, and it's the same thing. I was kind of rushing because I saw friends of mine, magicians that were like 20 yards away. And I'm like, uh, come on. He's like, don't, don't rush me now because everybody, oh, there's a girl dancing on the bar. Look at those tits. Oh, the fucking lights. It was really, it was really great to see him do that. Well, I heard he uh, sang karaoke. Well, not just once, a couple of times. Wait, you, wait, you talk wait, about wait it. Wait a minute. Was this your first time going there to was, Vegas or yeah, you've been there before? Much, I'd been there for like nine hours once. But you didn't have fun, right? Well, I won. <laughs> I won that time. Oh. Playing poker, I won like five hundred bucks. So yeah. that's the first, the first yeah. time chasing deal you're talking about. Yeah. And then the hate yourself for the next yeah. nine hours waiting to to leave <laughs> to go yeah. home the next morning. So that's what I did the next that Thursday afternoon is sit in the hotel room and watch TV, all pissed off that I lost yeah. all my money already. Yeah, I just told him. I said, "Look, man, I'm going to go down on Fremont Street because I know he was Jones, and he get down to some table. I didn't know if it was the it slots like or whatever. Slots. Yeah, but then I saw him. Whatever, a couple hours later, he didn't have to say shit. I just looked at him. I'm like, okay, let's let's go to Fremont Street. Let's break pattern real quick so he doesn't have to break down his fucking losses. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I don't only that time. The first time you saw me, I'd already, I already I, that's the that's the hundred that I lost." And that was waiting for my first Jack and Coke, not knowing the trick of just sitting there acting like you're pushing the buttons for until she comes. Until you <laughs> yeah, I, I had to explain that to him. Kenny tells me, uh, yeah, uh, the only time I really drank is uh, Tom bought me a $14 beer. It's yeah. huge. And I drank the whole thing just because it cost $14. I go, you don't know how to sit at a nickel machine? There you go. I, he goes, I, again, I, I he said, I tried that and I would lost just waiting for her. I lost all his money. And I go, <laughs> you don't bet when she's not there. Exactly. You sit there. Exactly. That's the old. And then you put a nickel in when the fucking she sees I, you, know, you. When no, he I leaves. I didn't know that either. No, I mean, <laughs> I, I didn't have the time to educate him in, in 24 hours. I, you know, he was free to go and do what he wanted to do. And uh, I, I, I reserved my gambling for Thursday while he was doing his storage unit thing. Yeah. And the night before, I was, I was, it, by, we didn't go to bed till probably what three thirty. Well, they, let's go up to that. So now we're walking down, and he's seeing these these there's guys a, f spitting, freestyling, this, and whatnot. There was this guy free freestyling, and he he was pretty good. And I got I got hooked into that right away. And so I went and sang karaoke and came back out with a better buzz, with some more with some tequila and another Bud Light that cost <laughs> another. Forty fucking dollars in a bar, <laughs> but hey. So this is when the kid got busted smoking our twelve dollar doobie. 
That was something that was interesting. All right, I want to hear Tom's version. Well, no. Because I heard, I heard no. Kenny's boring, my version stuttering version. Tom. Well, mine will probably be just Kenny's as boring. Not that. You're just not a good storyteller. <laughs> no, he just, Wait, once that, upon a time. He lives it. Did I make him feel better? Uh, unless, so unless, it, unless it rhymes. His head just hit the bar. <laughs> Kenny, head up. <laughs> no, we we left that whatever the dispensary thing, and uh, now we're on Fremont Street. And I didn't even know myself because I hadn't been in them. You know, I get high occasionally with friends back there, but I didn't know what the laws change and if you can or cannot smoke out in public. And so I lit up <laughs> the joint. And I'm like, this is cool. You know, it's rolled like the regular. Like this well, looks like a cigarette. This Go is ahead. after karaoke, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. They have recreational weed in Nevada. Yeah. I, for, I had forgotten that. It's, but I wouldn't know. I didn't By know the way, sh- this is my area of expertise. You go back where the dishwashers hang out and smoke <laughs> weed, and your biggest fear is somebody asking you for a hit, not cops. <laughs> yeah, ex- getting wrong. exactly. <laughs> this is, uh, where we were at, we was kind of in the hood. This is, uh, Tom was looking over his shoulder when we were going to get the weed. And there was not a soul on this this street, the whole street, the whole way. There was no cars, no people. Glad we had street lights because if we didn't, Tom would have said, I ain't going with you on this one. You're on your own, buddy, for sure. This (laughs) Now, this was the thing. He said once he came back and he left from fucking, you know, horror fucking hotel to the left. It was like Beverly Hills. He came back. He's like, fuck, you're right, man. I shouldn't have gone there. When when, when you say that, I realized to the right isn't very pretty either. No. (laughs) No, no, but you go straight across the the Fremont Street. But this was the thing. I had, you know, the the fucking Greyhound station next to the plaza. That's been there forever before we were there. And that's, you know, where they insert the bullets manually. That's how, you know, for the old blind, you know. So he's looking on his fucking, you know, rum pump. He's looking on his phone. He goes, oh, no, it's, it's, a, it's a dispensary. I go, good. Because I just assumed he was doing like Andrus or something. Hey, anybody got weed? And you just meet him. I it, thought, honestly thought, and it wasn't my bad. I thought you were going to do that. But when he said he's looking, he goes, that's ah, just a mile up the road. I'm like, okay, it's not the best of areas. And it went on. We were walking up past Charleston. I mean, walking... <laughs> But it you was, got, you I ain't car. going on fucking Charleston. No, no, said. no. But we, we had just parked. Yeah. He said, I'm not going on fucking Charleston. That's the way he said it, too. I'm not going up Charleston That's or a, down. You walked that? I yeah. guarantee yeah. you I walked just kept to the going. same dispensary while we were there. I guarantee it. <laughs> no. I know what you're talking but the, but about. Actually, but actually, the good news is that that fucking area is so much better than it was. I mean, was even little- less than six years ago, if you had walked three blocks up that way, forget about it. There's no lights. You're just a fucking walker. You're a, you're an easy mark, and it was all pretty much lit up, but there was nobody there. But it it ended up it was cool. There was nobody there except yeah. one homeless lady that laid on the other side of her remember? roadblock. Remember, fucking. Remember when she tried to walk up behind us, and I just said stop one yeah. second, and then she walked by, and she <laughs> she was gone. You know, tearing at flies in the air. I'm like, I told you, <laughs> I let them walk in front of you when they're doing that shit. Zigging and zagging through the street from garbage can to garbage can, yeah. and then she jumped behind her. She's feral. And, yeah, and I th- did she take a dump? Oh, she was. That was her. Fu- was that was her house, dude. Her house What's was it? behind that. I didn't know what that roadblocks concrete pillar thing, whatever the hell they they use on the highway to stop you from wrecking. Well, that was her blinder, Piling. pretty much from everybody. Because, yeah. like you said, it's the DMZ zone. It's nothing but a huge blank lot. <laughs> Let's be fair. That was one of her houses. Exactly. True. Exactly. True. That yeah, was close. Exactly. <laughs> to give her credit, nobody could actually see her Old behind that rich. roadblock. No. Uh, They've landed. Amber alert. I hope that's an Amber Alert, not a storm, because one of them affects me, and one of them doesn't. <laughs> it could be a storm. Yeah, I hope it's not. Shut up. That's a storm warning delayed PM Remember, are you, where are you from, the UK? Jonathan, is that coming from Britain? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Can the Queen swim? A foreign dust storm? That's what a, the? That is a foreign dust storm. <laughs> Jonathan is a previous podcast guest that's here in our audience, but I don't think we've aired it yet, because uh-uh. it's an evergreen. And plus... Uh, he wanted to square it away so it didn't fuck up uh, uh, his job that he's now quit and moved to Bisbee. Right. How about that? We That's fought, one way to fix this it. This guy left That's Silicon Valley it. and yes. moved to Bisbee. Welcome to Bisbee. Right. Taking a year off, and that what year, year you leads live on? to another. Black Knob Some View. Black knob. Okay, you're on Black Knob? BBV. Good, good. Anyway, back to the weed story. You fucking get to no. the dispensary. So we get to the dispensary. We get back. Ultimately, we're on I'm, Fremont. He's hitting it as soon as I we get out. I sparked the fucking thing right when we In the parking out. lot. Yeah. That, I made it halfway through the parking Ooh, lot, and I, I think, lit it. I don't smoke weed, and I don't know about dispensaries, but it's, it's like I, this parking you lot You can't chug empty. a beer in a no, liquor store. No, look. I walked, the, I'm, I walked from, I'm bold about it, and I don't do that. <laughs> I, <was fucking> <laughs> I was watching from a distance. I literally walked out, got halfway down the parking lot, looked 
clear that, make sure, pop it. <laughs> make sure what? I'm not going to get fucking rolled right you there. You don't have Google? <laughs> I did. I was on Google Maps, man. No, not Google Maps. Just see if you're allowed to smoke weed in public. In I Vegas. don't care. I figured it out right away. You look, I took my two or three hits. I put the shit away. Some, this is the only intense moment we had was, was black gangster dude and his two Eminem white buddies tried to bully me a little bit. Rap but, battle? No, no. <laughs> it was different. It was different. Yeah. No, he, he was trying to actually physically give me a little start shit. He's one of those bumping, oh, what, watch where you're going type things. I. Why does that never happen to me? Guys, I wish it would have. No. But anyways, I ignored him, but I watched the cops at the same very time just roll up fast, staring right at me and just stop on their bikes, pick them up and park them and just stare at me the whole time. So I'm like, wait a minute, we're in Vegas. They watched me light that doobie on camera and some dude said, you got a smoker on Charleston going up the alley about to get robbed by four homeless people, you know. And then the homeless lady came out and saved us. No, she stayed in bed. Yeah. No. Anyways. So we ended up ultimately, we're, now we're on Fremont Street and now smoking under or the can canopy. You, can you get Kenny an ashtray? <laughs> get the fucking I'm ash. Balancing. There's a shot glass right there. There you it's go. Disposable. Here you go. Here you go. There you go, Kenneth. So, yes, we're on Fremont. We come out of the bar, and I think this is, you know, we're at the end of the, of the dome area. So, <laughs> not lit up. We're in the fucking hood. I'm lit up. Let it looks Tom like... finish this story. No, there you go. No, go ahead. Because I've heard your version. Yeah. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't either. You didn't. Well, it's true. If you look down Fremont Street during the day, you know you, you realize you're in the ghetto right away after yeah. you're at the end of that dome. Yeah. You know, I didn't. You know, it's motel, 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 hotel, motel. And I was actually wanting to walk up Fremont further. Tom's like, let's go this way. Took me back into underneath the dome because I my dumb ass would have right, for the listener the Fremont the Street experience it's like five blocks long yeah. and they have a big you know lit up kind of yeah. canopy over Fremont Street. It used to be a street. It is now a, a promenade that goes yeah. down across yeah. five blocks. Yeah, you can zip line through live it. bands every other block. Yeah, if you've ever been to Chicago O'Hare and you had to go through that uh, cool. walking uh, yeah, underground, no, <laughs> exactly, that changes colors that over your head. There it's it like is. that, but it it's a little that. more glitzy. It's also where we we prefer to go when when Doug does shows down there. You do it yeah. at the uh, what's the, the Plaza Hotel? The Plaza Hotel. The Plaza, it's yeah. right across the street from that, and yeah. uh, it's it's it, it's everything we need uh, Vegas to yeah. be. I, I've stayed at the other place. My mother-in-law, when you talk about taking the left out of the plaza, you have that one other uh, train oh. depot, Main Street Main Station. Main Street Station. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and yeah. then you go into North Las Vegas. Yeah. That's where my mother-in-law lived when I went down there with you guys to check on. That's the only reason oh, I that's know. that's when you didn't know if she was alive. A welfare yeah. check. Yeah. Yeah. A welfare check. check. A welfare walk, check. Walk past that. That is a <laughs> that is a fucking rough area. Yeah. But the the plaza area in the Fremont is is way better. Like if you then better to me than going in the the main strip. That you you said that's the uh, best buffet that you've ever been to. Uh, oh the, yeah, the yeah. the main street, main street station, station has a good buffet. Uh, no, this uh, go ahead, go ahead, uh, Kenny, like go it. ahead. Uh uh-uh. uh, maybe it's because of all the McDonald's I'd eaten from the previous day, <laughs> but no, I walked in there and I looked at everything at the buffet. The the best thing on the buffet was the collard greens. <laughs> Everything else on that thing was ahead, shit, Chad. in my opinion. I am sorry. That buffet has every single thing you could possibly imagine. <laughs> and I had imagine. every single and thing. And he found I the collard greens. It's a hike to walk around and find <laughs> on my plate. Like, you're in like Mexico, I, and then all of a sudden you're in Saudi Arabia. They have yeah. different. Yeah. Villages that yeah. you visit. Well, yeah. Kenny just, food. I think Kenny just set it up by saying maybe he was spoiled by McDonald's is why he. <laughs> yeah. No, was I ex- visited every damn these- station and got a piece of every station on my plate. Take my word for it. I came back with a pile plate. Tom took a video, mm-hmm. and then I took one bite of my fat ridden ribs and almost upchucked. I was like, damn it. And then I ate. Do you have a McRib? <laughs> these, no. Uh, these crab legs are disgusting. Do you have a McFish sandwich? Yeah, exactly. They did not have crab legs. They had. Uh, they do have crab legs. <laughs> they did not. Not that day. I would have got crab legs. You didn't hike far enough. <laughs> I walked the whole damn buffet. To view the world through the lens that Kenny has. <laughs> yes. Which oh, is okay. so yeah. interesting. I want to get back to the joint because then he get bullied by the joint and the, the guy asked him if he knows where to get weed according to the story he told me. Which guy? Some the kid. The black guy that... Not the black would, guy. No, oh. he wasn't the black guy. He was some white kid that... I don't know who he was, and neither did Tom. And I was getting ready to put the doobie into, into the it's tube right the when the kid came up and asked Tom. He didn't ask me. 
But Tom still told him, ask him. So I said, do I look like I fucking sell weed? And I put my doobie away. And but then Tom asked me for it back, and we and he relit it and handed it to the, to this dude. And while he did that, I fucking literally turned around, and there's two fucking cops on bikes that look like they just got out of high school, mm. literally rolling up behind him. I'm like cops, lighting a cigarette, walking to the DJ. Well, the guy who's watching the kid rap because it's his equipment that he's loaning, you know, so on and so forth. But anyways. <laughs> Now I'm watching these these guys. I know. Yeah, yeah, unnecessary details. I really wish to tighten it up. I don't understand. So what do the cops do? The cops ask. They look around. They're just smelling first. At first, they're they're whipping to see where it comes from. The strongest. Meanwhile, this kid's still sitting here. Wait, these cops walked in and started no. actively sniffing. They rode their bikes in. They rode their bikes in. They came in on their bikes. Okay, now. Tom, they're in between me, Tom, and this kid. The kid now notices them and puts it and cups it. Tom's like, eh, eh. and I'm like already like, but Tom's already caught in the middle of the smoke. So he's got nothing he can do except, mm, and stand there. Now the cops go, look at his hands. His hands are open because he opened them up. Literally, he just says, nothing up my sleeve. <laughs> none here. <laughs> Meanwhile, the kid's trying to, trying to like slide away like he's not noticed oh, at he all. Wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't going to go any fucking where. And he's cu- he's got this thing cupped in his hand. And meanwhile, I don't know what he does with it, but he pulled a Tom trick and it disappeared. Yeah. And fucking. <laughs> Wait, let me get this straight. The local who approached you asking if you knew where to buy weed. In a state that allows legal weed. I think this was. Now a- has his we- your weed in his secret pocket? Yeah, not my weed. <laughs> this was Tom's doobie, actually, that I paid for. <laughs> I'm confused. Yeah, but anyway, I'm confused listening to it. But it, <laughs> how can well, so? What, what do what, the cops do? Well, what else? they took the kid away pretty much because they asked the kid, "Do you know?" First, they told him, "Do you know it's illegal to smoke in public?" And the kid's like, "I don't know what you're talking about." He didn't, <laughs> and I'm looking at the kid like, "Just fucking tell him you don't know." You know, we, tourist act tourist, and he keeps arguing with the, these kids. I keep saying kids because they were kids. Yeah, and me and Tom are just now standing away from this whole thing, talking to this this dude whose speakers, you know, and we're just bullshit. And then we watch him carry take this kid away, and I thought jail, because I didn't think nothing. Yeah. I didn't think they're just gonna write him a citation for two hundred fifty bucks and you know send him on his way. About a half an hour later, this kid comes back, and I'm like, why is he come back to us? You know, wait, hang on. Where are you that he can come back to you? We're I thought you're walking back Fran- from no. a fucking we didn't dispensary. S- no, l- let me let me just. <sighs> Thank take you. take something Thank right you. here, just for a second. No, what happened a at this point? Time to stand in one spot. The bottom line was is that he had he had been Kenny. smoking. Yeah, Kenny. Yeah. Thank you. What? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, Bonnie. There it is. Um, he was already smoking, but I saw out of the perif- my peripheral vision, this kid just came up and said, "Hey, man, can I, can I get a hit?" And I looked as I'm handing it to him. I had taken one fucking hit, I think. And we were talking to some of the guys that were doing the mixing for the guys that were doing the rapping. So I'm talking to this big brother, and we're talking, and I'm smiling. As I go to take a hit, I'm going to hand it to this kid. It, out of the peripheral vision, I see the immediately, I see the metro, the, the yeah. yellow yeah. thing. Yeah. I hand it to him. Once I handed it off out of the corner of my eye, I saw them come up, but they didn't see me with the joint. And this kid was maybe 19, 20 year old kid. And as soon as I handed it and I saw it, I didn't do anything that would be weird, like freak out or anything. I just continued talking to the brother. The kid had the joint. I didn't know if they were stopping for him because there were other homeless people in that area. And then everyone's a suspect. Yeah, no, exactly. So then the fucking guy, they put the bikes down and they went right to him. They go, Hey, what are you doing? And then I just kept smiling, talking to the brother, and stepping to the left slowly. <laughs> Step, literally stepping out of the scene. We're high fiving. We're talking. I'm looking. I, I saw the car. I'm looking. I'm, I'm giving them the nod. Like, hey, what's up? Like, I had nothing to do. And that kid was cool. The kid, whatever it was, they took him away. And then an hour later, he was back there. They just probably ran warrants. Okay, so you were hanging out in this area for the, the rapping. Yeah, we were, we were okay. in the middle of Fremont Street. All right, what the, what the, Everything, all the, the I lost the story when he said he lit well, it up in an empty parking lot, and then all of a sudden yeah, I was on back the way on Fremont out. Street. So yeah. It was a, I, I missed a, so a rookie mistake. If you're going to smoke weed in public, don't do it near black people. 
The cops are going to come check you out. I remember in Tucson, I made that mistake. I was smoking weed on the patio. Oh, and, fuck uh, yeah. yeah you, I've, I've learned. That's why uh, we were... Yeah, we weren't that... I, I, I get that, but we dicks. weren't that close to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were equal opportunity dicks at this point. And, uh, but so it ended up. It was anticlimactic. The kid left, and then later on, I saw him sitting there. I'm like, hey, dude, what happened? Oh, they just took me, and they ran, and I had nothing, so I'm back. I'm like, oh, okay. But I was just kind of shocked. That, to me, is weird. It's legal recreational, medicinal, but don't fucking, you know, even old Vegas, when you had drinks, we were allowed to carry fucking glasses from casino to casino, nothing. But that's still the case, right? Except for plastic? No, you have to have plastic. There right, can be but nothing. You can still, is that just the strip? Or is it that's all of Las Vegas? It's so downtown, uh, primarily downtown on Fremont Street. It's they weird because really... I, you know, I would go out and, Bingo and I would walk the dogs with cans of beer, and I go, "This is probably illegal, but in this neighborhood, yeah. like, it's it's kind of like everything's your front porch." Yeah. Like, I guess they probably yeah, you're could not causing fuck problems. It. It's yeah. not a problem. Yeah, and the what, well, whatever. I mean, I'm not an expert on fucking weed in Vegas. Period. I mean, I, my weed smoking days were as a teenager. I thought I'd get high occasionally. And uh, but to see that that's it's a double fucking uh, cross. It really is. Yeah, sure. You can t take it. You can go out. No problem. As soon as you step out the door, you're fucking they stop well, it, you. The same thing in Denver. That's why I asked if you had Google earlier, because I literally Googled it when I got to Denver. And I'm like, well, you know, where can I smoke fucking weed yeah. in Colorado? Because it's legal and I can buy it in the store. But I don't. When I saw a cop after we left the dispensary, when I saw a cop, I handed it to Jenny and I'm like, hold this. I'm going to go in the store just out of habit because yeah. I'm like, oh. and I smoke <laughs> so infrequently. But now when I do, I enjoy it because this shit is very strong relative to the 50 joints we smoked when I was a, a teenager. <laughs> yeah. This this horrible <laughs> shake. It's true. So when we left the dispensary, I didn't take any hits all the way down. I wanted to make sure we were safely down by the canopy. Kenny was in. By the way, I have to admire Kenny for many reasons quickly is that that nine hour drive there was no meltdown and he did not smoke anywhere so that's nine fucking hours out of his day that he didn't get high so that's admirable that is, so this is why he hit up and lit up and baked up immediately as soon as we got out of the so well there was done. a couple Thank close you, meltdowns well, I, I was i was getting, switchbacks how about uh his driving the only thing i was worried about with kenny is like road rage him driving no it was, uh, it was, we started out, he, we left it from the front of the uh, Bisbee Grand, and he, what did he put on? Vivaldi. Go fucking figure. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It wasn't fucking slim shit. Yeah. <laughs> Wrapped in a joint. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, but it was great. And the only time he actually did have even close to a meltdown is when we're coming back and we're by the lavender pit. That was it. Not and even, even that, even that was. It nothing. was just. Dumb drivers in yeah. uh, in between Phoenix and Tucson, pretty much. I was flying back. It took it took nine, almost ten hours to get there. Like, like I said, huh. two hours on a stupid side highway because I went too far on the three hundred three. That's besides the point. Yeah. And <laughs> subconsciously, I just think I went by La Cantera Golf Course because I wanted to play the course. I ain't gonna lie. Remember, but, we we got a fuck we, you phone. I'm not turning here. <laughs> how do you how do you get lost in this, dude? You know day? what? It's it's called driving and trying to read your phone, which doing bad, 75 I, miles an hour at the same time, which is a bad thing. So he did that very very infrequently. No, I remember didn't. when we were coming through. Somebody tweeted something like, "Hey, you you should go through." What was the town again? Kingman. No, no, no. We're Chad. What was the? Uh, Globe. 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 The guy Globe. says, oh, yeah, it's really cool. You should uh, go up this way and make a look. No. We were headed no. home. Kenny's I'd like, already almost this. fallen asleep and I was on the, the fucking side. Oh, I I'd, I'd, I'd already almost fallen. Yeah, fall. some guy tweeted something and said, yeah, you should just make a left here and go through Globe because it's beautiful. And that's where Chad, we're like, okay, we know. Oh, so you we could, know Chad. You could get, get your yeah. tweets, but not GPS. No, I didn't get no, no <laughs> tweets. That was Tom. I was me. I Trust me. He had I his suck. earbuds in the whole way home. Yeah. I didn't speak pretty much the whole way. The only thing I spoke to were the, were the other cars telling them, get the fuck out of my way. Because yeah. you're in the fast lane, you're going too slow. Move. Also, I was patting him on the back. Good job, Kenny. Am I right or wrong? You're right. You yeah. Know. See? I, got, so I, I, I stopped it, it twice. I stopped in Casa Grande from Vegas to Casa Grande. We were there. I don't know what time it was, 2 in the afternoon. We got home at 4.30, and we left at 9. Yeah. Well done. Something like well, that. I'm glad you made it <laughs> safe. No one got hurt. Thank no you, Douglas. Thank we're you, Kenny. Take a, we're going to take a Absolutely. break. And uh, Kenny's, Kenny. 
Kenny said, we have a spot, but it's, it's going to be a, a little elongated because Kenny's going to teach us how to fucking play fantasy football. Uh-oh. Uh, one after word. After we it. take a piss. Please hold. Woo-hoo. Do you need to make a will? Need to file a living trust? Or get a patent on that million-dollar idea? Do you need a lawyer for any reason at all? Well, why not just hire yourself? At FoolForAClient.com, we make the dream of being your own attorney spring to life. When it comes to protecting your family and your future, are you going to trust some stranger with a fancy diploma on the wall? What makes some attorney better than you? I'm facing felony charges for DUI manslaughter. With FoolForAClient.com, you just download pages of confusing legal speak and fill in the blanks. It's just like Mad Libs. <laughs> For almost every legal affair, don't throw away your hard-earned cash on some stiff in a suit. Go to FoolForAClient.com and show up in court in your pajamas. Thanks to FoolForAClient.com, I'm not allowed in Texas anymore. That's FoolForAClient.com with the number four because someone else has the spelled out version. I'm supposed to give Andy this weed. Denver must have been uh, just like Disneyland for you guys. I guess compared to other, but I, it's not like weed was in shortage anywhere. For else. Andy, he was constantly looking for it. Andy sent himself thirty joints. <laughs> I know, and was out by the time I met you guys. He would fucking five thirty. He'd break it out in the car, and the whole car reeks. We're, like, in fucking Kansas, and he's smoking them in a fucking parking lot in front of every security camera. We're so close. I remember here seeing the six-mile marker when we were about to hit Colorado from Kansas going, if we can get to Colorado. It's like, like we're trying to flee some. Yeah, yeah. Like we're, like we're, we're, uh, we're out of their jurisdiction. Yeah. Common sense's jurisdiction yeah, ends at D's bound and down, loaded up and chugging. Do, do, do you remember we were driving, and I was in the front, you were in the front, Tracy's in the back, and then uh, Andy's sitting behind me, and I'm yeah. driving. And there's a there's a smell, and I'm like, oh man, I didn't even see a skunk. And I think you're like, yeah, we must, yeah, we must have maybe came from the side or something. Mm-hmm. And then Tracy, Tracy's even like, yeah. Wow, that's strong, skunk. And then it's like Tracy looks over and goes, "Oh, Andy's rolling a joint." I mean, here's us talking about that smell, and like we couldn't even see a skunk. I wonder where it came from. And he's sitting there like pig pen with these flies above his head as he's rolling the stanky joint, and doesn't even. And he goes, uh, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." I'm, is that all right? <laughs> it's like what the fuck, dude? And you tell him no over no. and over again, and he just keeps fucking doing it yeah. in the room. Like, just having his weed out, you had to put a towel underneath the hotel room door. He already got fucking thrown out of a hotel on that tour with Erickson. Erickson for smoking fucking weed. They threw him out in the middle of the night. No, t- a half hour after they checked in. Oh. <laughs> it, it, yeah, and uh, it changes the detail. Well, it, my perception of how I understood the story from Andy's perspective changed after this tour <laughs> when oh he goes God. look man it was on my coat it's a, i went outside to smoke and i'm like oh, yeah that's plausible that D- doug says that all the time look i'm a smoker who goes outside to smoke 25 feet from the door like smoke. But yeah, everything i have like smoke. and he was saying that and then you know every day in the car we pull over to, to get fast food we go in and he hangs back <laughs> i know yeah, I- you're in a fucking flying J in <laughs> fucking redneck america in indiana Everyone's a cop. <laughs> like, yeah, that guy, yeah, they're all cops. Or they, they don't like us. Yeah, you, know? you have a fucking purple mohawk. Uh, so everyone hates us already. So, Andy, probably this is not a good time to smoke around the orange hair girl and the purple hair <laughs> mohawk driver. As they smell weed, they're going to blame it on you two freaks with your weird hair. <laughs> Andy and I look like proper white nationalists. <laughs> <laughs> Blend in. That is probably why Andy enjoyed smoking weed with me, because I'm I'm perfectly willing to smoke weed in public. Yeah. And uh, Andy would smoke weed with me, you know, right there on the side of the street. Yeah, but you would know, you would be able to balance risk 
where Andy doesn't have that sense about him. He doesn't see risk. Like he that. doesn't see cameras. Yeah. Well, Fucking uh, cameras on this corner of a building. And he was out in uh, the Toledo on the deck above outside very, the restaurant. Very tolerant place, I'm sure. <laughs> Funny bone. There are cameras everywhere because the, the Hilton is across. Yeah. The, and I go, Andy, what are you doing? And he had that that one glass pipe thing that you gave him, yeah. Chad, to smoke yeah. in. I Chill go, him. that looks like a fucking crack, crack pipe. pipe, dude. And they go, hey, look. It's one. not for public. That's for real quick in the corner. He was you gonna, hold it in your fist. Yeah, looking out at the cameras. I go, hey, just take a second, Andy. See if Just take a sweep, 180 <laughs> degrees. Tell me if you see any cameras. And he starts looking around. I'm going, well, I see that you're kind of – you. You focus in. That is a camera straight across. That's pointing over here. There's one in each corner behind us <laughs> that can actually look. That, I go, so if you're going to do something, be aware of your surroundings. See, I, and yeah, I think I'm is. guilty of that, too, because I am aware of it and I see it, but I still do it anyway. But, but I, I trust think I you. can. Well, and like we got caught smoking weed in the bar, uh, at the outside bar in Lansing. Uh, Stanhope asked the bartender, he's like, can I smoke outside? And the bartender says, you can smoke outside as long as there's not people out there eating. The nut house is where you guys so, were. So we just fucking stopped listening to, yeah, you can smoke outside. <laughs> so we walked outside oh, past yeah. the people eating, and we go to the very back daytime. corner. Yeah, all right. And Stanhope is smoking a cigarette, so I light up a joint, and then Andy joined me, and we smoked a, <laughs> most of a joint, and Stanhope smoked most of a cigarette, and a waitress walked out to the back, and she goes, um, you're not allowed to smoke out here? If people are out here eating. Oh, and the she, bartender and said. And then she looked at me and Annie and she goes, and you guys are not allowed to smoke weed out here at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I immediately turned it back to smoking and I'm like, wait a minute. He asked the bartender if we could smoke out here and he said yes. And she got all confused. Like <laughs> I turned it around immediately and that's why I always have this false confidence yes. that I can do that. No matter what situation it is, like she questioned herself for a long time, and then went back inside and asked, you Probably know, he pissed at the bartender. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean telling him they could smoke yeah. weed out there? Yeah. yeah. So it was. <laughs> that was after uh, Lansing uh, lug nuts. Yeah, yeah. I think we already went we over. We talked about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's uh, let's get to who's the crinkly bad guy? God damn it! <laughs> Atmospherics, uh, dude. That's uh, that's Andy's mouth sounds, crinkly bags. I have the thing with mouth sounds. I don't know. Uh, someone was tweeting today about the Burt Kreischer podcast yeah. and said someone at the two hour mark started fucking eating with their mouth open. Or there were there were her. mouth sounds. They weren't very specific because it could have. No, I don't think anyone was chewing. There were so many people there. It could have been so much food anyone. too. Well, we. Well, there was there was not food until we were yeah, done podcasting. Done. Yeah, and Joby, I, I didn't eat any food until we were done podcasting. Oh, Somebody was, did mention there. about me pulling on the vape pen, which I did because Bert Crash should give me a vape pen. So me and Andy were pulling on that, but but I've always been told that uh, smoking weed on mic is okay for ambiance. Well, I mean that was that was part of it. Was that she had those uh, uh, Wendy from the Comedy Works had that wonderful backyard. With that water feature, I think the water feature might have been a little too much for oh, background maybe, noise. Maybe, maybe that's what they were hearing. Just, no, no, If no. I heard, like, gurgling water from a jacuzzi or a pool and I thought it was someone fucking slurping on a fucking... No, they would have said it from the beginning because it, it was there the whole yeah. time. It never turned off. Thanks again to Wendy. We yeah, that was so time. good. And we, we came in rolling seven deep like fucking rappers, but Joby's... Hooning up the steaks, Tracy's pouring the booze. Like I show up with a producer, a co-host, a cook, and a fucking bartender. <laughs> yeah, that was a yeah, it was a, it was a strong showing, and Wendy Curtis was fucking amazing. I still don't know why she hates me. <laughs> it's a joke. All right, Kenny, let's get into this. Is going to be an actual like a. Uh, 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 you know, we try to incorporate the sponsor into our dialogue, but this time we really have to because our new sponsor is... Uh, Draft is what you search for in your app store to play it on your phone. If you go to playdraft.com, that's how you can play it on your computer. Draft.com, also draft. You can get there the same way, right. playdraft.com. If you like typing more words. It's fantasy football. I don't know how it works. 
I've bet football for years and decades, but I never had the time to get into fantasy football. I was always about the uniforms. Is there a promotional code? <laughs> no, you don't have to. No, you, you worry about nothing. Put your phone away. You don't have to sell this. You have to explain. We'll do the selling. We have. You have to tell us how the fuck you play fantasy football. Okay, first it starts with a draft. When you get your teams you, you, or your group of people, that is, say if it was, for example, me, you, Chad Shank, and let's use that as an example. Have that you we're ever gonna played have... online? Yes, I do. I, I play online with some friends of ours. Let me let me tell you my illusion of what fantasy football is, and then you correct me. I would assume that if you're playing with friends, that's what you do with Gabe. Gabe how many yeah. people are in that? Like, it's like a league, right? There's yeah, like a little oh, social I, circle. I think ten or eleven of us. All right, so when you draft players, you're the only guy that can get that player, just like a real draft. Right. But online, that can't be true. Y well, it is not online. No, online. There's, there's a. Did, no, you're, you're still, still playing, playing in a in a group, in just a group. like that, just you're like Death Pool, just like our, our Death Pool. Did Joby Death leave? Pool. I haven't seen him. Yeah, I think he did. Ah, <laughs> shit. Joby, Joby could use Death Pool to help me figure out because so there's leagues like Death yeah, Pool. Yeah, it's basically a league. It's a group of people. It doesn't matter. It can start from ten to it can go up to a hundred. Who cares? They'll take you know however many teams. Well, there's not that many players, so it has to cap out. But other, point. you know, a lot of the free leagues that you see online, there's multiple thousands of people playing them, and they can pick, and they're different groups. You can all have. Tom, how many people can have Tom Brady? In your group, one. In your group, one. But on draft.com. It's like a solo pick. Yeah, Draft.com is the same. It's the same style as what I'm understanding. Yeah, it's no, it's the same. You, you, it's a solo you're a, pick. like a funeral home. Like but you can pool. change your team weekly. I and from what I have you been, add, you could change them all the time. That's yeah, it, that's what this is. It, you don't have to wait every week to be able to do it. I was talking to, to the the guy over at, at Draft, and he was saying, Doug and I are perfect for this because we have no idea what's going on. And he said, that's what we're doing this for. We're making it so you don't have to wait once a week to do it. You don't have to play in a big league with guys that are going to see you coming a mile away, like, <laughs> like at a poker table. And this makes it easier to jump in and jump out. So you're not sitting there like pouring over these things. And you can have very small uh, picks. You can have just three players. Yeah. And you play three players against everyone else's three players. All right. Which makes it more manageable. So you're not spending a lot of time researching. It's not... I Go ahead. From what I've seen, it's pretty much the same thing. It's like leagues, like you can, they place for dollar eighteen or a dollar eighteen for everybody to buy in. The prize pool's like six dollars or eight dollars, and it's nine. It's nine people, you know, nine different people drafting. Okay, but that's the season just started as we're speaking. Yeah. Do but, you mm -hmm. already have your fantasy football team for this week? Yes. You would, I could look. I've got Tom Brady's my quarterback. I've got uh, some running back. I can't remember none of their guys' names. I do have Kansas City defense, which I benched for Steelers defense. Um, you know, All right. but yeah, I drafted everybody. Drafted. We randomly picked for when you drafted in the round, and say I drafted seventh, so I got the seventh pick in mine, and that's how you do it. Okay, what we're gonna do with PlayDraft.com is we're going to have you pick the Funhouse fantasy team for this season. It goes season long, I assume. You can have all different kinds. I can run different things on this thing. You change guys each week. Yeah, but we're going to let Kenny do this. We'll learn how to do it. But we're going to let Kenny run the Funhouse Doug Stanhope podcast fantasy team. And if you fuck up... <laughs> I won't. <laughs> have you ever won... I did on my leagues last year. I did win one of them. I didn't how win many, anything. How many did you play? Three. All right. It's not, you know, and I drafted two of the guys I drafted auto, which you can do an auto draft where you don't even have to be there for it. They'll just it's pick. It's like the quick pick. Yeah. A quick they'll, pick. Yeah. They'll pick them all for you. <laughs> while the other guys are drafting live, you're just getting what's coming up the best guy next is what they'll do for you for the auto draft, or unless you queue them. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my account auto. And I'm going to play against you. How about that? We do that. Yeah. Chaley, you'll set that up. We, but I'll we both be the control. I'll be the control. You'll do auto. I'll try and pick. 
but I don't know what any of it is. And and Kenny will actually. Oh, you have I'll, an account too. I have an account also. All right. yeah. I'm gonna auto pick because you know what? I have to work on fucking material on the road. If I'm s- sitting around seeing who has a fucking ACL this week, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could see the next. I don't know the quarterback of, of my favorite team. I think it's still Carson Palmer uh, for the Cardinals. But he goes I don't, he goes deep in the draft. Yeah, I'm gonna go with auto pick. The beauty of this is that just like uh, like uh, Celebrity Death Pool, which was a sponsor of ours for a long time, we know how that works. All the math is done. That's the same thing with this. You just go in, pick your picks, and be done. And then you oh, just watch. That's great. Yeah, that's yeah, how I it goes. It. Our league is called what? Uh, Stan, Stan Hope's crew. It's, I set it up for, uh, I think, nine. Okay. Um, well, no, ten people. Ten people. Ten teams. So there's nine left. I'm waiting. You never know when they're going to. So we'll, we'll take up two more. So we'll actually have room for seven more uh, teams. I'm eventually going to get into this. We've canceled football for the first time in nine years, yeah. maybe. We, we're not doing football at the Funhouse this year. I mean, it might be on while we're podcasting. Yeah. If I happen to be home, I might stumble up. But it's not that fucking every Sunday shit. And now you're going to pull me right back into it. <laughs> One way or another, you're doing football. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna auto pick until you beat me once. And then I'm going to learn this shit. <laughs> I'm going to beat you the first week. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, then uh, we're going to have to talk stakes. Well, so let's let's get our first teams picked. Oh, I already have the stakes. Stocks who said, next time you bet Kenny, make him do this, but don't tell him it was my idea. And I'm like, of course I'm going to tell him it's your idea because if he loses, you're going to want the credit. Yeah. Last time it was MMA, and you what did you? you sh- sh- I lost my hair, which is now back again. Wait, what? Did, you shaved it as a clown or yeah, something? Yeah. We shaved out the top and colored the sides. <laughs> Bozo. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Stock's idea is you have to get not Lee press on nails, but re- I'm sorry, I looked at your wife because she's Asian. Real Oriental. Fucking- oh oh like wait, a- no, I think you were right. Sorry. Like a real, like a real Pacific <laughs> rim. <laughs> you mean nails like my girlfriend gets? Yeah, Th- that take. Yeah, that they they shave down your nail and then they 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 make long. You're gonna have. Oh, they're beautiful, dude. Miss Pat nails. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I just assume she has those you're gonna, nails. Ah, you're gonna have to you're... dial a phone with a pencil, dude. <laughs> That's so, a good one, Stop. Yeah, you're, you, 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 I'll give you. I'll give you the weekend to come up with an appropriate. Equal, separate but equal, kind of uh, what I have to do. Oh man, I'm gonna have to get yeah. some outside ideas on that. Yeah, keep in mind you don't have your own ideas. Call yeah. stocks. <laughs> She's got. Oh no, this now. is. But <laughs> well, this is for the end of the season, right? You could you could oh, play it. What are we weekly? betting? On? I thought it was the first week. You guys said. Oh no, this bet. Oh, I don't know if this nail bet's got to be like one of these one and done type deals. It's not gonna. No, be it's a... gonna last a month. Oh fuck that. So yeah, we'll, you mean I gotta wear fucking Lee press on nails if I no 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 you just have month? to wear them for a week. We're gonna t- we're gonna figure out how long we're gonna run this uh, this one game. Come and join me on Draft today. Download the app anytime. Just search Draft in your app store and join a game in minutes, or play right from your computer on PlayDraft.com. Whatever you want, I'm gonna so get into this. <laughs> I can feel it already. <laughs> Hit it, Chad. For a limited time only, all new players get a free entry into a draft when you make your first deposit. But first, you have to use the promo code STANHOPE. That's right, play a real money game for free, just for using the promo code STANHOPE on your first deposit on draft. Just search draft in the app store or go to playdraft.com and come play free with promo code STANHOPE. All right, good. And you know what I just realized? I know. Kreischer does fantasy football. Huge. So now I'm definitely going to have to fucking start playing. He's talked about this on the podcast. He sits at home, or no, he sits in the hotel on the room. road on Sundays. Waiting to go to the, the gig on Sunday nights. He's waiting. With Packs every, all his shit. Everything's packed. Sitting everything's by ready the door. To go, sitting, he's, got, he's got his computer up. He's got his phone up. I think two computers. Everything. Yeah, yeah. He's got, it, he probably has a, a, an <laughs> iPad or something. So he's got everything, and he's just picking all day. Until he, he goes to the uh, to, to the gig that night, he's watching his his players to see what they're yeah, scoring. Exactly. Man, so, I've been pretending to like football <laughs> for like all preseason, so that I could hang out with you guys for football season this year and fit in. And now you guys took it to like another level. 
Well, well it, this is kind of what happens when Joby introduced the trade round on death pool. It used to be you just pick your team at the beginning of the year of who's going to die, and you wait a year to see who wins. Now it's weekly. Yeah, it's going. worse than death pool, which is monthly. <laughs> We're going to have to do that kind of research this could, every week. I think this could actually be done daily. It can That's be. That's the worst. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Draft, drafts start every couple of minutes, so you can join right now. So in wow. between all those times you're in the car driving to your next gig, you're going to be staring at your phone, making picks. Know what I'm going to do, Kenny, is I'm going to stare at Twitter, because once we put this out, Every fuckhead in the world is going to be going, hey, take the fucking Broncos <laughs> defense this week. Don't think I can't watch that same Twitter feed. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> I just I just can't wait to see him get those fingernails finally cleaned and uh, hey, man, get, you know get some, get some uh, nice long numbers on there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get one of them uh, flashy ones. So, like, you'll see Kenny walking like a mile away because it'll be fluorescent green. <laughs> Fangs on his fingers. Silky. Yeah. <laughs> Silky. Oh. I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll quit smoking for a month That's... and uh, only he drink three drinks. Yeah, he wants to do that. I'm Don't not betting that. you that shit. You crazy? You might like long nails. No, <laughs> I won't. You can hold your joints. I won't be able. To, I will not be able to play basketball for that whole time. <laughs> Yes, you will. Oh, no, I won't. I won't you even won't be able to do it well, but court. you'll be able to play. No, I won't. <laughs> oh, I broke a nail, fellas. Hang on. You better win, then. I'll tell you that. <laughs> in, your, in your bikini bottoms with your long nails? <laughs> oh, I, I should make you do a heels. show in your fucking <laughs> Yeah, that's what I say. Even thong. if you just went tit for tat on the nail thing, Stanhope has to explain it to people. You, nobody you know gives a fuck. Stanhope well, if it... To- it that, well, now fantasy football ends at the end of the regular season. I would no. Know. We'd bet on the week. We'd go fucking. Does, week. Oh, hey, because you got guys injured, guys coming off of a disabled. But does it go through Super Bowl? Yeah. Oh yeah. It gets playoffs oh, and right. shit too. Wow. So yeah, I could do anything for a month. You pity I your- take a month off after Super Bowl anyway. Yeah. Usually. Well, just a few weeks. Don't you? You might be on a book tour. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> God damn it. No, that's December. Hey, pre-order the book now that we're fucking just doing a whole fucking infomercial of a, of a podcast. Yeah, pre-order the book. It's important to pre-order the book. This is not fame on Amazon. The pre-order numbers matter. So please pre-order it now. I just sent off the final proofread copy, and thank God I... I was not going to proofread it. I'm not a guy who knows fucking grammar or anything. But then I realized there were some like, major fuck ups. You like found the some first stuff. Some yeah, the first continuity. chapter they had put as part of the introduction. I'm like, oh god damn it! I'm not gonna have to actually sit and read this. And I caught a bunch of shit, so it's good. It's weird uh, when I write. Uh, I, I purposely space out things with comic timing, so you read it, or I would read it like I would hear it. So, like, when they cram, like, no, that should be a double spaced. That would be the pause before you delivered the punchline. Like a script? Yeah, it's- but it didn't work that way. You don't put that in the fucking paragraph. You pause, but it didn't work that way at all. Like, that kind of thing where I'm, I'm obviously not the best writer in the world, but I know how to make the page look like how it would feel in a show format i can i can agree with you a hundred percent because i didn't realize i was telling shaley earlier uh the audible guy bruce was here he was the one who told me to uh you know if you can if you want to do this i can get stuff for you to do so that's the reason why i'm trying to do this now but he uh uh i forgot the fuck i was saying now oh formatting space oh I didn't realize how easy it was to read your book compared to trying to read other people's oh, yeah, stuff. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. it's very, you know, I find myself like, well, you should rewrite that and put that space. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not I'm not supposed to rewrite it. I'm just supposed to read it, but it's hard to read. So your stuff is very easy but to read. But you know Doug. You know Doug's voice. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's what the proofread, and I, I, again, I was not really... I mean, I skipped through as much as I could. I had to do it in a, you know, a, a night and yeah. a, a morning. But like italics are very important. Where, you know, um, I, uh, 
I don't want to hear this bullshit at all, but I especially don't want to hear this bullshit from you. Like, Italics on the you. I, I, Emphasis, it, it, yeah. yeah. There was so many sentences where you go, no, the italics. Were you doing that? There was one. I was talking about Scott Capurro, and I was talking about he's a, a gay comic. And uh, I said something about how I, I used to justify using the word faggot as a word of weakness. But that night, not only was I the faggot, but I would have been the bottom. <laughs> and they... They corrected it to at the bottom. Whoever's whoever whoever they don't understand the phrase oh, bottom, yeah. so they thought Slang, I missed yeah. a word. And, uh, <laughs> this guy's a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's a million things that I, I'm sure I missed. But did you, I, were you putting things in italics when you wrote it originally? I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I, I ship it off. Yeah. I I try to. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if I fucked up, but I know I didn't fuck or up. Or they may have been. They could have fixed it. at yeah. the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. It's done. I sent it off today and. Yep. And. Uh, uh, what are we? Uh, do you want to do any thank yous or anything from the road? Oh, I do have thank yous. Do you want to? Uh, I Jonathan, well, that yellow pad. There's so many thank yous. I just remembered earlier someone on the someone on the road gave me a, a a small silver butt plug that on the 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 butt end of it uh, was a picture of my mother, like uh, like you'd have like yeah about the size of a, like a if you had a pin on your uh, lapel like a band button yeah yeah uh, that small but, but it was yeah laminated uh, and it was my mother a picture of my mother on a butt plug. Like, who thinks of that? I love that person. It's a, bon it's a Bonnie plug. That was in Denver. She she had the pigtails. She's kind of suicide girl looking. Not, not the suicide girl, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, it, it, I'm sure I'm missing a bunch. I try to write them down. I get back. We're here for a matter of days and then go back on the hurricane run. Uh, Jesus. Josh in Vermont sent... Uh, Oh, miniature football players, little toy things that a child could choke on. I'd love to have those things around in case um, someone brings a fucking child over during football. Choke <laughs> on this. And I have this in my backpack, Chaley, I think, for the road, a uh, Phil Hendry CD. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, Mishka and or Ben from uh, the publishing company. Sent uh, My Fair Junkie by Amy Dresner. It's a book. Again, I I looked at the first chapter. It's a page and a half. And you go, oh, this is good. I love reading. Like, you look at the layout. Just sometimes you open a book and it's so fucking dense and the, yeah. everything's jammed together. <laughs> fucking emails. The emails you get where someone doesn't know how to make paragraphs and space it out. Where you go, oh, I... It's like Cafe Roca. They give you a little bit of food, a portion <laughs> at a time. They don't give you a fucking whole half a lamb. <laughs> Mishka sent us albums, autographed. We're, uh, they'll be in the next eBay auction. <laughs> Just fucking with you, Mishka. I think I was a dick to Mishka last time I saw him, but I, I was right, but I was in a bad mood. I said it wrong. Straight Fish is a, a novel by Mike Knox. But it, when it said novel, that means non-fiction. I mean, that means fiction. It's about a prison guard, but I think it means fiction. So I'll re-gift that if it's fiction. But you got a plug anyway. What do you got, Chaley? Oh, uh, I've got our dates coming up. I don't. You want me to read them? You want Chad? To oh read them? yeah, fucking. I got. I got. I got stuff too, though. Oh, tell us stuff. I got, uh, uh, thanks to everybody who's given me fucking uh, little shit to fucking record for them for fucking whatever they're willing to give me. I really appreciate that. I uh, made needed a little bit of money to go on my vacation, and I made a little bit, so I really appreciate that. But there was a couple people who just specifically didn't even fucking ask me to do anything and just fucking give me money so that I could have my uh, subscription to Voices.com and try to audition for shit. So uh, Sean Alaka and Mark Steers 
And Christopher, the guy who sent the mugs and the fuck tea, he always sends me shit. That guy's cool. Uh, he probably doesn't want me to use all of his names. So, but thanks Wait, is to he the everybody. guy that sends the Boeing shit? Uh, no, no. Hennigan and I went to that uh, Pima Air Museum. It's all fucking old military planes. Tucson. And, yeah, in Tucson. We thought, hey, we're driving by it anyway. Let's stop in. It's got like all sorts of weirded out like art planes and shit and old like JFK's Air Force One thing. And I said, well, we're going to start drinking at four o'clock in the mor- uh, in the afternoon. So if we just run through this museum, we could say we did something. So he sped walked. Hennigan's the only guy I know that walks as fast as me. We sped walked through this giant outdoor. It's like 50 acres. It's yeah, huge. It took, yeah. yeah, it took, uh, yeah, it took a handful of pictures and went, hey, see, we did something cultural. Let's go get fucking hammered at the hotel bar. <laughs> His heart grew a little bigger. <laughs> Here's uh, I did I did uh, I wanted to do this on the on the podcast uh, chat. Here's uh, eighty five bucks people have handed me during what during the tour uh, at the merch booth. I love eighty five yeah. bucks. Thanks guys. <laughs> uh, are you still doing uh, the coaching thing? Should we mention that? Uh, I have again? I haven't done I haven't done the thing uh, at Sean at SP presents. Uh, Sean Pratt is is the guy that I'm going through as my coach, but I've only done the one session with him. I got homework, but it involves learning. Uh, uh, getting a template and learning punch and roll that I'm going to talk about with yeah. Shaley. It's a and uh, it's audio technique. That guy has had some complications. I haven't been able to Skype with that guy, but I'm doing that tomorrow night. All right. So that but yeah, plug him is again. Going to be going uh, Sean, Sean Pratt at, 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 Sean, at SP Presents on Twitter and uh, Sean Pratt. Sean Pratt Presents. He's a he's a really good uh, established audiobook narrator, and he's uh, one of the best coaches out there. If anybody's interested in that, for uh, and like I said, it's a uh, it's, I'm learning a lot. I'm, I'm learning quite a bit already. You know, you, you go into something blind, not knowing the industry at all. It's good to know at least what the coaches are trying to teach people. And then you can learn from there and go from there. What's going on. But Chad went up twice on stage to, to introduce the show. I did. First time he went, ah, oh, I fucked that up. And the second time he knew exactly what he fucked up. And he's like, ah, oh, I'm going to do it this way. And he did. I really wish you were going to be on this fucking hurricane tour <laughs> we're doing. Maybe sometime in the future. <laughs> Where's that file? Oh, yeah. Maybe I moved him to a fucking folder. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck's going on here. I, I just oh, get, I get Are we still it. going? I can what? still do more. Thank you. It's about sold out. <laughs> do, what is it? Audioshank.com? Audioshank.com, it just redirects to my Twitter account yeah. because I don't have a, a thing. But email me, audioshank at iCloud.com. All right. And then I can... But that's also know, on the on the Twitter. Uh, absolutely. Can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Twitter, Twitter's yeah. the easiest place. I appreciate everything. The guy, A guy in Denver made me a pipe. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was nice. People brought us weed on the road. That was, you know, like everybody was fucking... I got a lot of thank yous. We got you. so much... Shit on the road, like we. I really appreciate it, and I I apologize to everyone that I'm such an asshole about the merch booth and the pictures. But when you've come out of that kind of a show, it's like coming out of a fist fight, and then you'll all immediately have to turn into politician mode. And I don't want to take a picture because I know how fucking awful my head looks. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a personal thing. It's nothing about you. It's not like I don't like you. I just don't. I don't know what to do with my face, and I keep saying, I just, I, I try to hug you, and st- I try to barter hugs instead of pictures, and then you want both. We rolled through pretty good on that last yeah, I one. I know. I but I understand. I, 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 then you see other comics that are fucking nice to people. I sign every autograph. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Like, we're old people. How many autographs you ever got that you kept? Jesus. But, yeah, you want to be nice in the moment. But when they're like, on I'm a, trying to be a better person. When they're on a kick-ass poster, well, I probably want to keep it. Yeah, but if people hand you a cocktail napkin, like, you're going to keep that. It's gonna, you're going to blow your nose in it later, and it's going to be all blood because the meth was mostly <laughs> fucking chlorine. <laughs> How did this Sharpie get on my face? Hang on. This, <laughs> since, since we're going into dates, this this guy drops every 
fucking beat you could possibly I, I want to say his real name but I, I can't but it's a name you want to say it's a mad magazine name so give me a say it's a uh uh, uh Let's say his name is uh, Merle Merkins. <laughs> it's, 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 it's such a funny name anyway. But he, the Dallas show where we start September 13th in this year of our Lord, 2017. Yeah, September. It's September. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Doug, I'm the asshole in Dallas who brings you the stolen hotel Bibles. I'm sure you do. But a lot of people do, too, to quote Hedberg, kind of. <laughs> I used to. And I haven't been at Dallas for a year, so I, yeah, I, I don't remember last night. Got you another stack waiting. Got one small problem. Just got paid today and found out next Thursday Addison Improv Show is sold out. I'd gladly pay you through PayPal if you could put me and my wife on the list. I'll also buy you some rounds of your favorite cheap vodka and limes at that little shithole bar around the corner from the improv after the show. I also have everyone's favorite pool ball stashed away for us all as well. I've scheduled next Thursday off for the occasion. Are you seeing every beat? Also, friends with JT and Bingo as well, meaning Facebook. <laughs> My bipolar wife is about to shit fit because it's sold out. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Tell Brian and Bingo I said hi, like smoking hi to people that don't. Brian? Yeah, no, neither smoke pot. <laughs> no, Brian doesn't even say hi to people. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I work for them uh, crazy fucks at hotel chain deleted. Hell, I can even get your room hookup. So question, what stolen room Bibles do you want more for the merch table? The regular ones or the Mormon ones? I can hook you up. Let me know. Uh. Just You just might keep my wife from landing me on your Deadpool this year. Oh. Like you just he dropped. I'll Everything. buy you booze. I'll buy you coke. And I wrote, "It's uh, sorry, M Merle. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, but it's sold out. Kind of like when a flight is sold out, or a hotel is sold out. <laughs> it's sold out. I don't know how many times I have to say this at a pocket. It's I, sold out. I say it twice. It's sold out. Sold out. That's it. it. Yeah. This guy sounds like the ultimate planner other than purchasing <laughs> tickets. <laughs> like, he thought of every angle. Ducks in a row. Every single angle. Yeah, like hang on. Every beat what? was hit. Hang but on. I'm not done yet. Let, let me do a reread. I, I forgot to drop J.T. Habersat. <laughs> <laughs> I can put that there. Ooh, I almost forgot to put J.T. Habersat in there. <laughs> I, I gave Chad Shank $40 to read my voicemail. <laughs> Thank you. And so I just wrote him back, and I said all that, and I said, but at least you still have the name. I just want to say his fucking name. But, uh, yeah, he's mentioning Coke, so I can't. But I said, at least you still have the name Merle Merkins. <laughs> if you were my friend, I would always call you by your full name, Merle Merkinson, because it's almost <laughs> like a nickname inside itself. Yeah. So I wish I had a, a, a better parallel anyway so yeah it's if it's sold out I, yeah i guess a lot of people sometimes don't show up if you're on twitter we follow me at doug stanhope if someone tweets hey i'm not going to be able to show up if you know anyone wants these tickets i will retweet it that is a great way of uh, we don't get involved Doug will tweet it or I'll say, hey, Doug, this person's looking for tickets or t looking to sell their tickets. And and Doug will tweet, hey, if you're looking to buy a ticket, this guy has them and then let go. You, you, we don't do any more than that. And on the day, if like like Denver. People don't show up. If you hang out outside the show and people don't show up, I don't even know how that works. Well, Because they bought tickets. It doesn't. Like like Denver, they released more seats so we could, in advance, say there's more tickets available. There's a hundred more tickets available. That was great. But the improvs, those if they're sold out, they're sold yeah. out. If there's any tickets available, that that is a, what we determine after Doug's already on stage. 
Yeah, we don't have a list. Hey, put me on the list. Yeah. <laughs> Like we have some VIP booth that's, oh, in <laughs> case someone begs me, I don't want to make that money right off the bat. I want to wait till someone really, make really. Make sweat. <laughs> make <them> sweat. <laughs> well, if you Hey, ask- Delta, saw that flight was sold out, but I really need to get out of the fucking hurricane zone. I got bumps. I'll suck your dick. <laughs> I'll take a middle seat between the middle and the window seat. I'll sit on a fucking... Uh, armrest armrest yeah. <laughs> all right a call to action killer termites will close on this you don't have to do it but they need like things for high got, school got, kids I, that I are broke and our neighbor who has never called the cops on us once uh and listened to 12 years of our bullshit and our bands and bird cloud and mishka and kenny rapping and nonsense and they still like us. She's the principal of the school, and she had a letter to the editor in the Bisbee Observer for fucking disadvantaged kids going to school. They call it, what do they call it, Chaley? What are, what are they, uh, P- the Puma Free Store? Puma Free it? Store. Yeah. And they were asking for any kind of just basic shit, toiletries. They said, someone, when I tweeted it, someone said, why did they say, uh, a uh, teen size uh, feminine products. <laughs> like, there's. There's a difference. difference. There is a difference? Yes. Well, it was a dude that tweeted me, and I go, yeah, that's a good question, huh? Queen Tex. Queen Tex <laughs> says Floyd. Good work. Anyway. Like, like, like small bottles of shampoo. Well, like, that's what yeah. she said. That's what caught my eye is, you know, those hotel bottles of shampoo that you have laying around? And I'm like, oh, fuck. We're going to. We're going to load up on the road. We're going to hit every maid cart and send them to. Ready? Pause the podcast and get a pen. Because you're going to send any kind of thing a, a broke kid needs. Pens, pencils. Mouthwash. Notebook. Back to school, notebooks, anything. Uh, this is for real. This is not a yeah. fuck with. This is for real. And it, it, it definitely helps some people. Flood them. And on your return address, just write killer termites with your return address. And don't be weird. These are fucking kids. Yeah. You can be funny, but don't be fucking weird like you are. Like, you, kid funny, not us funny. But send them shit that, yeah, just go through your cabinets and find that. Oh, you know, remember when I was going to, uh, I was going to teeth whiten, but uh, it takes five whole minutes. <laughs> Whatever. Just find shit and send it. Killer termites. Just make me proud on this one. Sealed. We don't have to say that. Jaylee, the address is? Puma Free Store, attention, Bisbee High School, 100 Old, Old Douglas Road, Bisbee, Arizona, 85603. 85603. Yeah, Puma is P-U-M-A if you don't have those kind of uh, wildcats where you live. Puma. Puma Free Store. Right, yeah, I, just load them up with anything a fucking broke kid would Shampoo, need. lotion, shower cap, vanity kit. Brass knuckles, a blackjack. There's people That's just me. loitering around the Puma yeah, free store to make fun of the fucking poor kids. Don't send Give those things. Some, don't, uh, please don't send those no, things. No, no, don't do that. Be, Only positive things. Kind of like when we heckle at baseball. Positive we keep things, it family yeah. friendly. Make them feel good. Yeah. Make them feel good, but yeah. Don't don't specifically go out and buy junior size feminine hygiene products. You're gonna seem weird. But if you have some already <laughs> in your cabinet for some reason, send those. You don't think we have 15 year old girl listeners? <laughs> I know for a fact we don't. <laughs> yeah, we probably don't. Hey, let's read the dates. Let's get out of All here. All right, dates. Doug Stanhope tour dates. September 13th, I'll read these anyway just to rub it in. September 13th, Dallas, Texas is sold out. Sold out. At the Addison Improv. Don't try to get on a list. Same thing goes on September 14th, Houston, Texas at the Improv. Sold out. Again, Houston, it's in the uh, hurricane uh, belt. There's probably a lot of people that don't even have homes, and they bought tickets before the hurricane. So, yeah, you show up at the gig, you you might get a seat, but I can't guarantee it. It might just be people bought tickets looking for a place to spend the night. September 15th, Lafayette, Louisiana, Club 337. Just, you know what, just read the fucking places. If they, they... September 16th, New Orleans, Louisiana. September 18th. Yeah, don't even read the date. Just tell them oh where my. we're going to be. They'll look it up on my website. 
This is why I didn't want to do it. <laughs> That's why I kept saying Mo- Mobile, Alabama. Pensacola, Florida. Tallahassee, Florida. Gainesville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida. Daytona Beach, Florida. Orlando, Florida. Scene of the crime, Daytona. Yep. Tampa, Florida. West Palm Beach. Austin, Texas. Chicago, Illinois. Austin, I'll, I will make sure that's not on this run. So that's yeah. October is Austin. Oh, oh yeah. Well, you said not to read yeah, dates. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's fine. And then November, we got two dates. November is Chicago, Illinois, and Seattle, Washington. And, yes, we will be adding Portland unless uh, Brian doesn't want a fucking job anymore. <laughs> So, yeah, that's that. And th- those will, th- at least that'll branch out. Yeah, Get on we- the mailing list. If you're on the mailing list, you're not going to hear me on fucking morning radio unless it's a lark. So get on the mailing list. If they sell out, the mailing list finds out first I'm coming. So it's your own goddamn fault. DougStanup.com. We don't send you spam. I don't send out newsletters. I don't tell you about my morning. I just tell you. When I'm going to be in your town. So that's it. Thank you, Chad Shank. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Greg Jaley. Thanks, everyone in the audience. And uh, we'll be back with another podcast uh, right after this drunk.